On paper, Pivot's new Mach 4 SL is a straight replacement for the long-running Mach 429 SL, but in reality, it's actually a very different bike that Pivot says is now equally suited for cross-country racing or general trail riding. So the bike that we're gonna be reviewing here is the Top Spec Trail XTR version, which comes with a Shimano XTR mechanical group, DT Swiss XRC 1200 carbon wheels, and Fox's fancy electronic live valve suspension system. Every full suspension bike Pivot has ever made uses Dave Weagle's DW Link short dual length suspension design. And this new Mach 4 SL is obviously no different. Now it has just 100 millimeters of travel like the old bike did, but the rear shock is now mounted vertically instead of horizontally, which makes for a more compact frame arrangement and a lighter front triangle. Now, as I mentioned before, the bike that we're testing has Fox's live valve system and every frame is compatible with it. And the way it works, there's a battery, a brain, two sensors, one at either end of the bike, and latching solenoids, one in the rear shock, one in the fork, that automatically detect when you're on smooth ground, when you're not, and opens and closes the suspension as needed. Other details includes room for 2.5 inch wide tires, internal cable routing, of course, room in the front triangle for one water bottle on every frame size and two on the extra large, and then a lower top tube that gives you more standover clearance and room for longer travel dropper posts. There's also a press fit bottom bracket in here, which I know is giving me kind of a bummer, but in fairness, Pivot does do a better job of this than most. I was pretty excited to ride the live valve system on this bike. Uh, that being said, it took a little bit longer for us to set up the bike so that we felt comfortable with it. Uh, we ended up riding the rear shock at 30% side with 22 clicks from closed on the rebound. We ran 70 PSI in the fork with 12 clicks of rebound from closed. And then we ran both the front and the rear shock pretty open in the compression mode. Uh, we ran a Maxxis Minion 2.5 up front at uh, 19 PSI and Maxxis Minion DHR2 uh, out back at 21 PSI, both with the XO Plus casing to better hold up to the rocks. So I really had a harder time with the slacker seat tube angle on the pivot. Uh, so it's a 73 and a half degree uh, seat tube angle. So I really felt like I had to move the saddle all the way forward on the rails. And then I still wanted to be even further forward uh, to make sure that that front end didn't lift when I was climbing. I thought that the suspension worked really well when you were climbing. That being said, I didn't love the feeling of the live valve. I felt like it was a little bit harsh. It felt uh, just a little bit less comfortable than I would have liked it to. Yeah, same here. I mean, I have more time on the live valve system on this bike. Um, and I do like how it's really supportive and it does open and close more or less the way that I want it to. Uh, and the traction is great, but I, I would agree it's not necessarily the absolute smoothest setup out there. Even with that uh, slightly heavier live valve system, uh, the Pivot was one of the lighter bikes in the downcountry category at 26.6 pounds. And that was definitely nice on the longer climbs that we took this bike on. You know, on most trails, a bike this short would probably be just fine. But if you're, you know, on a trail like, you know, we're on overnight sensation here in Pemberton, it's a little bit slippery through some of the corners. And the second you lose a little bit of grip on this pivot, because the wheelbase is so short, you're just changing your angle into that corner enough that you've got to keep on it all the time holding the line. Whereas a bike with a, with a longer wheelbase and especially a longer front center, you can kind of just kind of just hold your position on the bars and just rail through it. So looking at the geometry chart, it really kind of seems to me like Pivot designed this bike primarily around 100 millimeter fourth. Uh, for our medium size, the reach is pretty reasonable actually in that setting at 440 millimeters. But when you over fork it with 120 mil fork, uh, you do kick back the head tube angle, which is what you want. But we also lose 13 millimeters of reach in that setting, which is the exact opposite of what you want. I really felt that I wanted it to be more supple, a little bit more predictable. I just really felt like it was struggling to keep up with the terrain that we have here in Pepperton. I've ridden this bike quite a lot at home in Colorado, and I actually really kind of fell in love with Live Out there. It opens up right away when you hit really square edge impacts, and then when you're on smoother terrain, it just it's pretty much locked out and gives you awesome support. Uh, but out here, it almost kind of felt like it struggled to keep up with, with things out here, mainly because they're coming at you so quickly and there's so much. Um, so it just, it didn't really quite wow me the way I had hoped it would out here. So I was actually 5% slower on the pivot than I was on my fastest lap on the test loop, which was actually on the Mondraker. And I lost a lot more time on the descent than I did on any other bike. I was actually really fast on the climb, but on the descent, I just found the bike had trouble maintaining traction. Uh, and I just found myself choosing uh, more easy lines. Yeah, I had a similar experience on the pivot. Um, I had a really good climbing time, but the total was actually 4% slower than my best time, uh, which was on the Juliana. Um, on the descent, I felt like I was kind of fighting it a fair bit and I had to just kind of like tackle every piece of trail bit by bit instead of just doing the whole thing in one go. 
So this is one of Pivot's most expensive builds, so it's no surprise that the build kit was uh, pretty dialed. Uh, a couple of the nitpicky complaints that I had were the 34 tooth chainring and then that 75 millimeter stem, uh, both of which I think are a little bit more specific to cross country racing than they are to the down country category. On the plus side, some of the editors really might not like them, but I really enjoyed riding the grips that Pivot has on here. Another thing that I liked was the XTR brakes. Even though there's only 160 millimeter rotors, they feel like they have plenty of power for this bike. So the Pivot is really fast on less demanding terrain. It also has really great pedaling efficiency, and then it's just super lightweight even with that Fox Live valve. A downside though is that the bike just doesn't really work as well with a 120 mm fork as it does with a 100 mm fork. The C-tube angle ends up being way too slack and the reach just ends up feeling way too short. And I have to say that after testing it out here, I'm a little more uncertain about live valve. Uh, I love the way it rides at home in Colorado, um, but on, on these trails in Pemberton with more technical terrain, it's a little bit more of a question mark for me. Another thing to think about with live valve or anything electronic really, um, we had some connection issues with the front fork sensor on this setup. We have a intermittently loose connection, which on this bike is kind of annoying because turns out the connection is what makes it work. The Pivot Mach 4 still feels like a cross-country bike to me, despite that dropper post and the 120 millimeter fork. Uh, I think to be a true down-country bike, you have to be really looking forward to the descents on the bike, which is not really the case with this one. To me, the Pivot Mach 4 SL feels more like a true cross-country bike, but for a rider who's looking for a little bit more of a cushion, a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more forgiving factor to it. So there you have it, the Pivot Mach 4 SL. Stay tuned for more videos from the Pink Bike Field Test, as well as the Downcountry Roundtable, where we compare all of our downcountry bikes.